Hey guys, how's it going? Things started here. Okay, just trying to make sure this is up and going. All right. We'll do the Facebook thing. All right, share. You. And then share to my page. Share to a page. Here we go. Okay. Let's get rocking. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Monday live stream. <laughs> With the first one, first one of the year, the new year, 2020. Hey, what's up, Craig? How you guys doing? Okay. Let's do... Uh, so this, this is a... Um, character designed by TB Choi. I had the opportunity to meet her at uh, Lightbox Expo last year. Super nice. Really knows her, her art and anatomy. And uh, yeah, so my friend, my friend Marty found this design of hers. I'm like, oh yeah, that'll work. Um, Chuck McGee, happy new year. Thanks, man. Happy new year. <laughs> hey, what's up, Dan? Um, or I might find the video or document that explains the manual adjustments you made to your UI, like the background color and document size. Um, I don't know that I actually went over that, but you can find it all right here in, um, in, in, in the colors right here. And then under config, all you have to do is hit enable customize. And then you can hold down control and alt and drag any of these buttons around. And if you want to get rid of them, you just drag them to the canvas and let go. And if you want to bring them back, you have to pull them out of the menus and like this and hold down control plus alt and put it wherever you want and let go and it will stick, stick there. So that's kind of how you do it. And then when you're all done, uh, turn that back off and hit um, store config or save UI. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy to do once you get used to it. Okay. So this will be her head. It'll, she'll have a really square head here in a little, in a little bit. <laughs> so how's everybody, everybody doing? Is your new year 2020 going okay? I should say personally, not, um, there's so much crazy stuff going on. <laughs> Awesome. I'm just kind of looking at shapes and stuff here. Now, um, drawing or drawing, sculpting from a concept that's drawn from the direct front is a little more challenging than a three quarter view because you don't get the depth information. You have to kind of make it up as you go using your, your art knowledge. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up, Neil? Um, hey, Neil, I was gonna pay. I was gonna send this to you, but so TB Choi's Instagram is here. Forgot to mute these. Okay, mute, mute. All right, we're good. Okay, it's cool that I it sends it to all four platforms when I post something. That's nice. Thanks, Restream. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to pull this out here, turn the opacity down, and use it kind of cheatily as a proportion guide. 
Ah, pretty close. Fairly close. Uh, yeah, I'll still make them. How you decide what they look like, I'll just make it up based on the, um, based on her design. I'll just kind of try and find something that that uh, seems like it makes sense. Let's see. Let's mirror and weld this. Okay. Just wanted to pull this down a little bit. Was it down? Up. Maybe it was up. It was up. <laughs> All right, I'm already getting confused. And her? Yeah. All right. Anyway, okay. Hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, Frank. How you guys doing? Thanks for hanging out with me on another Monday. I really appreciate it. I think with these legs, I'm just gonna keep them as, as one piece this time, I think. Oh, from Baja, California. Hello. <laughs> awesome, Neil, yep. Yeah, super long legs and a very, very square head, <laughs> super square head. Okay. Duplicating these things around. Hey Chris, I did actually. Well, I haven't actually. I I saw that he released it, but I haven't um, downloaded it or or taken a look yet. Yeah, the reason I kind of wanted to do this one is, um, yeah, Neil, that one. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this concept is because um, it's so pushed. Like this is this is crazy proportions and I love it. So I wanna it's a it's a challenge for me. I'm I'm always up for a challenge, so let's do it, bring it on, kind of a thing. <laughs> oh a T Rex in there, cool. Wanna check it out. Mitch and I are are working together um a lot on the next iteration of the three D character workshop. So you'll see his artwork throughout the new iteration of it, which I'm super excited about because um, Mitch and I have we uh, we we have this um, weird way that we we think the same. I mean, he thinks the same in 2D as I do in 3D, and they that we just kind of go go together pretty well, like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty. Pretty anxious about that. And if you got, if you guys don't know who I'm talking about um, or who we're talking about, we're talking about Mitch Leaway. And uh, I don't, if if you wouldn't mind, Neil, it'd be awesome if you could uh, pop a link in there for Mitch's stuff. And I also work a lot with my friend uh, Joshua Black, Josh Josh Hunter Black. If you want to. Look him up. Love his stuff as well. Uh, Bruce, yeah, it depends on it depends on the goal of your sculpt. Um, since I usually like to have the option of 3D printing my characters. I like to make my characters look good from all sides if I can if I can help it. So I will be adding hands. It's the only time you really don't sculpt 
parts that are missing is if you if you're uh, sculpting to a camera like in a film or a television or just in an illustration then then you can leave them out but typically it's a good idea to finish them out hey from germany and chile hello and welcome all around the world Okay, let's see here. It's kind of kind of a tricky tricky hip situation. From India, hello. <laughs> Love to see people joining us from all around the world. It's, it's always fascinating to me. <laughs> yeah, Neil. Me too. Right, Bruce. Yes. Cushion points. Okay, I think we're. This is getting quite stretched, so I'm wanting to. Uh, hey, Prasad, how's it, how's it going? Thank you. Yeah, this is nice. So this is again. This is done by uh, T B Choi. Is what she goes by. And I. I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to meet her at the Lightbox Expo last year. Super nice. Okay. So I'm going to try and Z-remesh these so I can get the legs. It's probably going to be too high. Yeah. Turn on keep groups too. Let's try three. That's better. Okay. Too far. Hey, what's up, Night Shadow? How you doing? I usually do these as separate pieces, the glutes, but uh, for some reason I wanted to try and just make them part of the legs. And this is, I, it, it reminds me why I usually keep them separate pieces. <laughs> it's kind of a, little difficult to deal with. Orlando. I know Orlando. I actually went to, uh, I spent some time in Orlando in the military. That's where I went to boot camp. <laughs> so I have memories from Orlando. Humid, humidest place I've ever been to. Okay. I should say the most humid place. Better better way of saying it. <laughs> yep, in the navy. In the navy.
I was there in 1990. Is learning stylized modeling beneficial for game job? Um, well, I've I was uh, I've worked in games for 22 years, and I sculpt stylized characters. I don't do realistic characters, so uh, take take that for what it's worth. But I've also been an animator and stuff too, so it hasn't always been just stylized characters. Um, I just, uh, White Box, I just had a conversation with a student of mine um, who is looking into the same thing, and it looks like to me that the 22, the regular Cintiq, um, has more pressured sensitivity levels, like 8,000 something, whereas the Cintiq HD, they're both actually 1920 by 1080p resolution. And I was trying to find the difference, and the the uh, one of them has the buttons on the side. That one has less res resolution, and the one without buttons has a higher resolution. So, um, yeah. Uh, so I'd probably go with the regular, I, I guess the regular Cintiq, unless you want the buttons on the side, which personally I like the buttons, but that's up to you. M more resolution, I don't know how much higher the resolution could really go um, because I, I just don't notice it. It's like it's, it's in the realm of diminishing returns. I mean, they just say more, higher and higher numbers where it doesn't, doesn't really matter as far as like the feel of it personally, you know, I was happy with it when it was back at like a thousand or something levels of sensitivity. <laughs> so, well, I used to have a 24 HD. It's a funny story because now my friend Joshua Hunter Black, the guy I was telling you about, I sold my 24 HD to him and I bought this. I'm working on a 27 inch um, Cintiq that I got a couple of years ago and I really like it, but I actually miss the buttons because I um, I I made this interface so I could slide my keyboard away and put the the Cintiq down in my lap and just use the buttons. So I miss it. <laughs> I actually miss the buttons quite a bit. So now I have a keyboard tray underneath, and I'm my left hand is on the keyboard and my right hand is you know with my my pen. So Chris, yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard they have not, PixLogic has not um, up or uh, up up the resolution of the of the buttons, and so the the interface gets really small and kind of uh, um, what is it called? The, the button resolution gets small, kind of pixelated. That's what I was looking for. Uh, no, sh sh I'm gonna. I'll be pushing the the head into a cube. I still want the roundness of it. I don't. I'd rather push the head into a cube rather than start with a cube and go the opposite way. Like personal preference, I guess. So, um, Moit, um, I can I tell me briefly how you could start the model. You can watch this back. It will be on the Pixelogics um, YouTube channel, so you can watch it back on there you miss some plus I have this is episode like 107 or something so you can always watch those back as well because I start kind of the same way every time oh the gizmos messed up I have not heard that hmm that's interesting I wonder in what way hey what's up guy it's going well Decided to do a full body this time instead of just a bust, since this is a pretty simple character, and uh, but I'm, I'm I'm really interested in it because it's quite pushed, and I like how it's pushed in a non-typical way. I'll pull these shoulders out from the torso rather than adding an extra piece. Hey, Javed, how's it going? OK, 
Okay. Look how small her torso is. I really push that. Okay. <laughs> So, Chris, how, in what way is it messed up in 4K? I'm curious now. <laughs> Let's see. Clip off the bottom. Like how the, the the buttons are clipped off. The scale of it's funny. Oh, interesting. Like too small. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to drag this up. All right. Um, do I ever use Z spheres? Uh, I yes and no. Um, it depends on the goal of the character. I usually block out in primitives like this, but um, for ZBrush 2020, I actually made a whole bunch, well, a hundred to be exact, a hundred Z-Sphere blockouts of animals and creatures and insects and things that ships with 2020. You can find them in uh, Zizu, which is right here, Zizu. You double click on that. This is full of Z Sphere mannequins that um, that I made. So there's like a hundred of them in there. So the answer is is yes. I have, I've used them occasionally. Um, that's uh, the the silhouette up in the corner is actually it ships with with ZBrush 2020. It's just there. So if you don't have 2020 and you don't have it, go get go get it because the upgrades are free. <laughs> yeah, I did. I made Z, uh, Pixelogic commissioned me to 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 make them for 2020, which I was happy to do. It was great. I just watched. Uh, I just put on My Hero Academia and went to town. <laughs> that was fun. I need to finish watching that. Okay, let's fix these legs here. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that sounds funny, Chris. Got to fire up the old laptop. <laughs> sounds like you got to crank it. <laughs> Am I going to make a custom direction icon? Are you talking about this guy up in here? Um, yeah, I'd like to. I actually had an idea for one. I made a guy that had a really long nose. Um, and he was like perfect because his nose is kind of like an arrow, you know, pointing the direction. Uh, I just need to finish him out. But I'll probably, probably do that. Because I was thinking about, um, you know, shipping it or giving it away. Because I give this user interface and my brushes away. I was thinking about adding a custom direction icon to it as well. But it's another thing to load and 
to maintain, so I kind of went away from it a little bit. It was a little too far out here. Looking at these shapes. Okay, let's give her some arms. These arms are they're kind of stick arms, so they'll be interesting to make, and since you can't see them. Thanks, Neil. Looking down a little more. Do a live symmetry. Whoop. Hey, what's up, Ronnie? Happy New Year's to you, my friend. <laughs> hey, Ronnie, you remember uh, TV Choi from Lightbox? This is one of her designs. Square head. <laughs> How long is it acceptable to finish a character? Um, that's a that's a huge, huge question that I really can't answer because there are so many variables. Um, first, it depends on the complexity of the character. Second, it, it depends on the goal of that character, what it's gonna be used for. Um, and then like how detailed the textures are, how detailed the surface is, how complex like the anatomy and how realistic and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really bold, or not, it's a broad question, very broad question. So I wish I, I had just a straight up answer, but I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna block in what I think her, um, what I think her hands would look like. Ah, uh, hello, and happy new year. First sculpt of 2020. I think I'm gonna make her hands, like her palms, uh, match her head and be like cubes, very, very square. Yeah, gorilla hands. <laughs> Not with that one though. Actually, I'll, I will use a cube for this one, why not? Thanks, James. I tried a realistic face study last night. I don't think it's doing that well. Yeah, realistic can be it can be difficult. <laughs> Get rid of the creases and then cut in some lines here yeah, I don't really have time to do uh, critiques while I'm streaming but I'm happy to look at them later <laughs> so fo I wish <laughs> well I kind of don't wish I'd be out of a job right <laughs> any
any new goals um yeah actually um so i'm re-recording my online workshop for 2020 because it's been almost three years since i launched my course um so that's that's a that's a big one um and the i'm also having a new community built for the course which i'm super excited about that as well and and then just some personal goals goals you know like i would love to lose some some weight and uh travel with the family more that kind of stuff uh do you do realistic sculpts as well uh no just stylized i usually i i um i'm just a fan of stylized stuff so That's typically where I go. <laughs> what are you talking about, Chris? <laughs> um, the who made the concept is TB Choi. If you look up uh, T, T is in Tom, B is in boy, and then C H O I, Choi. This is her stuff. And she is really, really good at anatomy, like insane. Probably one of the best I've seen. And I told her as much. <laughs> I met her in person last year. She's super nice. I did, James, I did. It was amazing. Loved it, loved it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna Z remesh this whole thing. Um, before I do, maybe I'll start to try and get this head to be more, more squarish. What 3D models? <laughs> Are you saying from claws? They look 3D, but they're not 3D. What anatomy tools? Like, what do you what do you mean? Claws is not 3D. <laughs> I mean, there's parts. It's all 2D. It's all hand drawn. The shading looks 3D. Yeah, they did an absurdly good job with that. New shading techniques. Really nice. Yeah, commit. Yeah, for sure. Hands are always a challenge, no matter what. Even if you've been sculpting for years and years, still a challenge. Okay. Yes, I do. Well, I use a 27 inch Cintiq, Wacom Cintiq. Okay, so that's that's good enough for a square head, I think, for starters. And then it'll get more and more square as I go. Pinch this up here a little bit. <laughs> uh john do 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 i ever use a pre-built hand mesh i do occasionally i have my own i actually give it to my students in the course so if you're one of my students you have access to it as well yes so it's actually just a block out a hand and then i just um edit it into place. I could actually bring it in and use it for her hand, but. Yeah, Claws, um, yeah, yeah, Claws was 2D. 
So uh, they, they did use some 3D objects animated to help them, like the sled and stuff. But as far as the characters, they're just, they're all hand drawn and then shaded to look like 3D. They did a fantastic job with it. <laughs> yeah, extend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because just the other day, my daughter's like, "Why, why doesn't Disney make two D hand drawn animation anymore?" It's like, good question, good question. I wish they still did, and I hope they do in the future. We went to see Frozen 2 yesterday and it was fantastic. The special effects in that film are just mind-blowing. Okay. I want to... Scale this out a little more. Maybe just overall lar larger. Okay, let's kind of check proportions a bit. Yeah, it's looking pretty close. It could be a little... Scaled up a little bit. Oop. There you go. Hey, what's up, Tenshi? How you doing? Okay. Let's park that over here. Okay. Um, how to study fundamentals in 3D? Like illumination perspective or it's more effective to do fundamentals in 2d um well it's kind of uh that's kind of tricky because since i'm a character sculptor i don't really pay too much attention about that kind of stuff i i pay more attention to like the anatomy and the design and everything that goes into a character not really on like props and lights and things like that. I mean, you need to know them when it comes to um, presenting your character in the end, when it comes to uh, putting together a portfolio, but that's not really where my focus is. I'm not a lighting director, so uh, yeah, if, if, if lighting is what you wanna get into, then I would focus it and focus on it and learn it, that kind of stuff, so. Oh, yeah, white box. No, please repeat your question if I don't answer it, so not a problem. Anatomy tools like busts or skeletons, I frequently do read. I, you know, Hogar stuff is great. Like, it, it's like a, it's like an exaggerated fundamentals book. Like you can see everything. Um, so it's it's they're really nice, but they're a little too exaggerated for my taste. They're they're nice, but you don't really see those those kind of things in in reality, I guess. <laughs> but they're based in reality, so, and they're, they're very, yeah, very crass. That's a good way to put it. Very, very uh, exaggerated and in your face. Um, so I have an escorche model from um, Michael DeFeo, and I, I forget the name of the other gentleman who, who did it. Um, I actually have a, a, ma a maquette of it that is, stands about two feet tall. And it's still in the box because I moved not too long ago. I need to get it out and put it back on my shelf. Um, and then um, I look at, I love, love, love the books from Anatomy for Sculptors. Um, I love to study TB Choi stuff. This, the, the girl who did this design, she does some fantastic, fantastic anatomy stuff. And I actually have some Pinterest pages 
um, Pinterest boards where I collect a bunch of anatomy images and things like that. So um, that's essentially all, we, there's, there's a whole bunch, but those are the ones that kind of come to my mind right now. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing, man? It's going well. Happy New Year's. Happy New Decade. <laughs> And there's also, White Box, there's also uh, an app that is that Escorche model that um, I, I wish I knew the name of it, but you can, you can find it, and it's really cool. Can you share? Yeah, just look up Shane Olson Art on Pinterest, and you'll see all my boards. Mike, were you able to make it to Utah for the holidays? Just curious. <laughs> we need to we need to catch up, man. Oh, sweet. Yep, anatomy is always always good to learn. Always, 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 always learning it. Medical and you know, and I also like to use. Um, work workout books like like yoga and stuff like that a lot of them have some really good uh like if well if you find some good ones there's a lot of them that have some good anatomical illustrations in them where you can see where they're breaking down like this exercise works out this group of muscles and that kind of stuff um so there there are some good books like that find them at costco <laughs> You just got to get past the UI. Um, it's it's not as bad as you think. It's 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 bad when it you're you're learning it, but after you get past that initial learning point, it's um, I actually prefer it sometimes to other programs. It's so customizable and stuff. You can just put put whatever you need wherever you need it. I better save this. Yep, you're you're welcome. Made my study of ZBrush very easy. Awesome, glad to hear it. Yeah, once you once you get used to the interface, once you get past all that, um, and I I wish people wouldn't complain about it so much because then it gives you a kind of a false sense of oh the UI is bad before you've even tried it kind of a thing. Um, it's not it's not bad. It's just different. It's not what you're used to, so but it, it plays to the, the strengths of what you're trying to do. So and once you learn it and get past that, uh, the, the learning hump, um, then you can pretty much make anything in here. <laughs> Different bad. It, it is, you know, it's actually more difficult to learn ZBrush if you're coming from another 3D software like Maya because then you're expecting this 3D software to behave exactly the same and it just doesn't. And then that's where a lot of people's frustration comes from because you, it's a different mindset. It's a different way of thinking about things. Um, so once, once you get your mind in the right place, then it becomes second nature, especially things like this. Like um, I'm using trackball navigation. You can't really do this in Maya. You're kind of just stuck to spinning it around like this. And so just that's an example, you know, just of, of uh, when you first start to use ZBrush, you're just like, I can't get my model in the right <laughs> orientation to work with. But now I'm like, I wish Maya had trackball navigation, you know. Um, that's just one, one small example. Okay. So I'm going to push in these eyes a little bit. Kind of start to get more of a road map. Anyway, Mike, it's really good to hear from you, man. I 
I met Mike at my first game career job back in, what was it, Mike? 1998, was it? <laughs> Having to ZBrush these days and sculpting is such a great way to learn anatomy. Reference and careful observation while working, yes. Listening to feedback from artists who know anatomy equals win. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Mike and, uh, Mike and I go way back. <laughs> 96, yeah, 98, right? <laughs> Flat calf club. <laughs> okay, this is this is feeling pretty good to me so far. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some fingers on there. Uh, no, no, no. All that means is that you're able to spin it vertically. Um, I don't necessarily use a trackball mouse to do it with. It just, that's part of the navigation that comes with ZBrush. And it frust frustrates a lot of people. And if you want to turn it off, you can go to transform and you click this w rotate on Y axis right here. That will make it behave like Maya. Um, but this is trackball navigation right here where you can rotate on all three axes. So, um, guy, I don't, yeah, it's, it, that would be amazing if they could do ZBrush VR. But the thing is, um, the way ZBrush works is it's not really a true 3d viewport. So I don't know how they would make translate this into a VR capable app i don't i don't know maybe it'd be awesome if they could but i just don't know if it's possible based on the way it's built and the way it functions but we'll see do you believe drawing and sculpting lessons may help yeah all all of it helps all of it helps for sure um I used to draw a lot, but I don't draw much anymore. And I, I want to get back into it. So um, I actually asked, I asked Santa for uh, an Apple iPad Pro and Procreate <laughs> so I can get back into it. So I really want to try some uh, 2D animation stuff. So we'll see. It's always fun to play with. I think I'm gonna give her four fingers. Give her a realistic hand. All ZBrush streaming is saved on this channel. Uh, yes, so if you want, you can go to Google, go to and type ZBrush Live, and it'll take you to, just click on this first link, and it'll take you to this page Pixlogic forward slash ZBrush live right here. We're actually live. Um, and if you go to schedule and presenters, you go to presenters, you can see we're all, uh, you can see all of the ZBrush streamers right here. And underneath their names, like Ashley here, you can see their past broadcasts and schedules. And so you can see when they're going live and then you can see all of their old schedules or their old uh, ZBrush Live um, streams. And it, you can also find them on the Pixelogic YouTube channel as well. So, yeah, and if you go here, I think, what are we up to? Episode, what, 107. So pretty crazy, but you can watch all of these, all these back, there's like, yeah, 106 episodes of it. <laughs> so anyway, that's where you can find all the past stuff. Okay. And I don't know why I'm making, I need to make this shorter. I need to make that pinky shorter. Let's just work on that hand for a minute.
this is going to be a character that's going to take a few episodes. Who's my favorite artist of all time? I don't know that I have one, but that's a really good question. I have a lot of favorites, but I don't know. And I have 2D artist favorites and 3D artist favorites. Um, like some of my favorite sculptors. Um, yeah, I don't have any one. Uh, pro well, I would say probably one of my favorite sculptors right now is Dylan Ekron. Um, he, I just love to watch his stuff. Uh, he really knows his anatomy and his appeal is, is on par and he's a really nice guy. So, um, that goes a long ways. <laughs> Let's see. And then I really like Michael DeFeo's stuff. Uh, oh, I can't do it when it's hidden. Hold on a second. Mirror and Weld. Um, I like uh, Point Pusher stuff. Um, I, liked, I like all the guys that I used to work with at Disney Interactive. Um, like Ian Jacobs and Brad Bolander. Matt Thorup. Matt Thorup's a, a streamer on here as well, occasionally. Um, and uh, Brian Allen. And I'm just throwing out tons of names. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. We, we also had some people come in to help us out that are amazing sculptors, like Irene Matar and uh, uh, Darren Marshall. Darren Marshall's amazing, amazing, amazing uh, traditional sculpting artist. He's a he was a fun guy to talk to as well. He's he's got a cool accent. He worked on the Clone Wars, like uh, the the cartoon Clone Wars show. He helped design that. Anyway, I, I can just go on and on and on about um, people I like. Ryan Peterson. Oh. I'm a huge fan of, uh, gosh. And there's 2D artists as well. Um, Like Johannes Helgeson, Sean Galloway. I don't know. I feel like if I, when I start naming names, I feel like I'm always going to leave somebody out that I'm a huge fan of because there's just so many. So, good night. Are you taking off? Um, I have a problem where every time I use Union, it crashes ZBrush. Have you run into this since the update to 2020? I haven't, and I really I wish I could. Uh, um, <laughs> Mike May, yeah, Mike's fantastic, man. Um, I I wish I I wish I could see your um. Like it's very specific. I would have to like look at your uh, your file. So maybe send it off to ZBrush, off to Pixelogic. They're really good about having you send them their file and they can dissect what's happening, why it. And usually it's just, you know, maybe you just accidentally put something a certain way and it just doesn't work. So try, uh, maybe just try a few different things and see um, if you can uh, get it to work not on the model that you're trying to do it with the, the one that's crashing like just try a, a unioning like a, a two spheres together just by themselves and see if it still works or if it crashes or whatever so yeah for sure mitch layaway there's a whole ton <laughs> uh how early on did i know that i wanted to be an artist oh when i was yeah i i've been creating my entire life since i was just a kid i was drawing and sculpting and all sorts of stuff um Like on any model? Okay. So if, if it's crashing just all the time, yeah, I would definitely uh, write in a ticket to Pixelogic and let them know 
Um, you may have to reinstall it or something, but um, yeah, that's it. I haven't had that that problem. Hey, Mike, are you still? Do you still stream much? Yes, sorry, Abram. I I don't work for Pixel Logic. I'm just I just volunteer to stream on their channel. So I'm not I'm not super duper techy when it comes to uh, technical issues with ZBrush. It's more of a this is how to use ZBrush demo. <laughs> hey, from Brazil, how's it going? Is there a way to share camera with Maya? Um. You can export the camera w with a FBX and it should come over. I haven't really messed with it much. Great to see you for the first time. Oh, thank you. How do one of your courses on Plural Site? How often do you stream? Uh, Brock, I've, I stream every Monday, this, this same time every Monday. So noon to, well, it's noon until two o'clock my time, which is mountain time, which is um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Pacific time. I haven't streamed much in a while. About to ramp it back up. I'm actually I'm actually thinking about streaming some more on my own, but that's yet to be seen. If I have time to do it, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. How do you snap an IMM brush object in the middle of an existing object? Say, um, you well. Ryan, you can't really do that. Um, you, you sort of can, but not like you think. So essentially what you would have to do is, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you would do that. That would be a question for Paul Gabery or um, Michael Pavlovich. So they're the, the or like... Uh, um, gosh, now I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm, anyway, if, if you see Paul Gabriel streaming again, I would ask him how to do that. Hey, what's up, Thomas? How's it going, man? Okay. So let's, uh, I think we're to a good point where we can merge all this together and start refining. I'm going to duplicate it, hide it. Um, interesting, Plural Sight is actually, it used to be, uh, uh, what was it called? 3D, uh, what was it called? Tutor? Digital Tutors, that's what it's called, Digital Tutors. Thanks, guys. Um, so Digital Tutors got purchased by Plural Sight, and their Plural Sight is from Utah, where I'm from, and they're building a gigantic building just kind of about 15 minutes from here, <laughs> which is crazy. Seven to nine UK time. Okay. Awesome. Okay. If you draw characters, the function of structure is only to visualize the character more easy. Um, I don't really understand the question. Like, uh, all art skills kind of related to each other. So drawing your characters will just kind of help you understand forms and perspective and all that kind of stuff too. And so sculpting will help drawing, drawing will help sculpting. It's all, it's all a circle, a circle of art <laughs> as it were. Okay, so I'm going to remesh this at a higher value. Oh, right. Yeah. You were, Thomas, you were telling me, um, are you still in Japan? Cause you were, I talked to you about it at the ZBrush summit. I, I kind of wanted to see, I'm interested to see what you're, where you're headed, what you're doing. Uh, 
let's see. Oh, nice, Mike. That's awesome. <laughs> I actually picked up a, uh, oh, in France. Weren't you in Japan for a while? With, with Pixelogic, you were in Japan, right? Am I, am I thinking about it wrong? <laughs> but you're back in France? That's good. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I was remembering correctly. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Drop my pen holder on the ground. But thank you very much. You've always been in France. Oh, okay. Okay. I would love to visit. Okay, let's do a union. Remesh by union is what I like to do at this point. Which is in the gear of the gizmo. You go to remesh by union and it'll stitch it all together like this. And then when you like it, you hit accept and then you hit symmetry, right, Neil? <laughs> yep, and you save it. Because uh, that'll turn symmetry off by default. Yeah, I'll definitely save this as the next step. Thank you, Roman. You're using Dynamesh when adding details or jumping into the subdivide right away. Uh, no, Lyle, there's so many different ways to do it, and I do it all the different ways. So I, I use um, Dynamesh. I use Sculptress Pro and I use subdivision surfaces. So it just depends on what point I am at in the, the build process, what I need to do, what I need to accomplish. That's, it's, I don't choose one way every single time. And recently, if you've been watching my live streams, I've been using uh, Sculptress Pro with Tessimate, which is kind of... Uh, Interesting. Um, any chance you'll do a new course on Pluralsight? Your course is really good, and I would love to understand your workflows more. Um, that's a good question. Uh, and the answer is probably not. And the reason why is because when I did that course for uh, Digital Tutors, that was kind of the beginning of me making the 3D character workshop. So basically what I did is like three or four courses for Digital Tutors. And then I did one on my own, which I put on Gumroad that did pretty well. It was this uh, frog, if any of you have seen it. And uh, then I decided I could go bigger with this. And I decided to create a full course teaching the entire character pipeline all the way, taking it, taking it all the way to a game character. And um, that is in the 3D Character Workshop. And you can find all about it in that link that Neil just posted. So... If you're interested in that. Okay, so let's go to, um, where are we at? Tessimate under geometry. And I can just, well, I'll duplicate this so you can see what. Anytime I'm going to do something major to the surface of the model, I usually duplicate my subtool. That way I have a, a, save, a safe place to go back to. Now, if I tessimate this, you'll see that it, it, it tessimated it way too much. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll this down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Thomas, I just got your message on, on Facebook. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll continue uh, speaking with you after we're done here. Okay, so basically you can roll this, this uh, little slider around until you get enough information in there to hold what you want. So I'm going to take it up to about here. Um, you know what? Before I do that, though, well, no, it's fine. I was going to say I could subdivide it so because you can see how it kind of keeps the poly edges inside there. But I'll just smooth them out. It's not a big deal. Okay. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, it'd be, I'd love to talk to you some more.
Okay. Oh, really, Mike? That's awesome. He's nervous about asking your feedback, even though it's been a while. Oh, just total, yeah, just have him post it in the community. Or, or he can even message me personally. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's awesome, Mike. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so now that this is tessimated like this, what I like to do is go into, turn on Sculptress Pro on a brush. Usually I hold down shift to turn it on. And uh, yeah, or dur during the Q&A, he can, he can send it to me and I can go over it during the Q&A if you want some feedback there. He's one of your leads, oh, that's awesome. Okay, so um, we'll tell him hello and thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically you can go to Stroke Go to Sculptress Pro and turn off adaptive size. And then I usually crank this around until it kind of um, is in the same ballpark as the tessimation that I already did. So I'm gonna crank this down and then just kind of run shift on there. It's too big still. That's a little small, like a sweet spot. There we go. So see how it's not affecting these quads very much when I smooth, but it's adding a few triangles in there. That's about where I want it to be. Happy New Year, thank you so much. Okay, so now I can crank up the uh, smoothing and then just kind of go to town smoothing this out. You can see what it's doing if I show you what the mesh looks like. Just kind of smooth out these poly, these grid lines that it left. All right. Okay. Let me know if I missed any questions, you guys. And she's got shorts on, so I'm gonna be fixing all this area here and adding shorts so it doesn't look like she's naked. <laughs> all right, talk to you later. Thanks for hanging out. to fix these hands too. Even though they'll be behind her back, I still wanted to make some. Hey, what's up, Tenchi? Uh, any tips on stylized fur? Uh, usually I'll use an insert multi-mesh brush or I'll work with masking, like masks to pull it out. Um, I, I usually don't use fiber mesh because you can't use that in games really. And then use it sparingly, like don't cover the whole thing and insert multi-mesh fur. It'll just look like a mess. So, um, it depends on the style of the character that you're working on, but, uh, just just think about the design of it and put it in very specific areas that will break the silhouette, like on elbows and cheeks and things. Yeah. So attention, yeah, that's what I would do. Just like, usually it's like on the top of the head, just a little kind of sprouts, you know, and like, like just a little bit here and here, you know, and on the tops of the ears, just enough to indicate that it's furry without it actually being covered with fur. That's what they did with like the old cartoons like like Warner Brothers and like Scooby-Doo and stuff like that. You they didn't you just assumed it was furry without it being furry, you know. Hey, happy new year. Oh, it's not showing me how many viewers I have anymore. 
seems like there's a lot because the chat's going crazy, which I appreciate. Thank you. Bellamy, uh, mouse hacks for animation. How do you create mouse hacks in ZBrush or create them in other software? I do it. I do it in ZBrush. Um, yeah, I just, I just kind of pull in a, a mouth cavity. You can mask it off and pull it in. You can use um, Z modeler to extrude it in. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. You just have to be careful because, um, because you uh, you can easily like sew the mouth shut. And some things that will sew the mouth shut are like Dynamesh will sh will sew it shut, um, and uh, Remesh by Union will will do that. Some things that won't is like the Z remesher will not um, just just moving things together and using Sculptress Pro will not sew it together. So you just have to be kind of careful when you're messing with it. Yep, no, no worries. Okay. So now that I have the the resolution right here, I can always go up here and turn it down and add resolution. Oh, it turns it off when it's partially hidden. That's right. So see, I can crank up the resolution in just the areas that I want it to be turned up in, like these fingers. Uh, no, I usually sculpt in this pose, yeah. I, I used to sculpt in T-poses, but I don't anymore. Um, because it's not, it's not as natural. Oh, right, Max, you asked that. Um, any tips for new teachers? I'm going to start teaching in the university. 3D hard surface and character design. Um, so my advice to you is... If you can, the hardest part is getting different levels of skill in your class and then trying to teach everyone equally. That's that's kind of the hardest part I had when I was teaching at a university is I had students of very varying degrees of skill and that was that was difficult to manage honestly because um some people wouldn't understand what I was saying. And then if I started in on just the beginner level, then a lot of people with the higher skill levels were getting bored. So um, try and make a prerequisite, I guess, if you're going to teach more advanced stuff. Or exclusively say, this is for beginners, so the more advanced people don't you know, join your course. Oh, Chris, yeah, that's awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. The, I like Boolean stuff. The only thing I don't like about Booleaning out uh, mouth cavities is uh, it gets, gets really sharp around the lip area because you're, you're subtracting an, one object from another, so the result is super crispy sharp, and then you have to work a lot to get it to be not so sharp. Um, a little bit more. It's looking broken. I think it's hanging too far out there. Let's push it in. Whoops. Come on. There we go wasn't inverting very well. All right. 
I struggled recently with revolting rhyme style mouth. I guess I don't know what that means, but <laughs> which I ended up just modeling in Maya because ZBrush, it was too tight to move around in. Um, yeah, and you can also set up poly groups. So you can hide and show like the upper and lower portions of the mouth. Like if you want to split your poly groups right down the mouth sides, um, that's a way to really easily hide and show the upper or lower portions of your mouth. So you can get in there and dig around. So, uh, yeah, you could you could round out the boolean mesh for sure. But then it's like when you when you I guess you could make it and then kind of put it to the side and keep using it over and over again. But um, otherwise, it's like uh, you're kind of starting to spend too much time um, making the boolean where you could just push it in and, and get there faster anyway, I guess, <laughs> if, that makes, if that makes sense. You gotta choose your battles, there you go. Like, is it gonna be faster to make your own Boolean or is it gonna be faster just to, just to do it, <laughs> you know? That thumb still looks awkward. Why the awkward thumb? There we go. A little better. I, I really like an offset wrist um, in stylized characters. That's why I'm doing it. On, I'm doing that on purpose. But it's kind of hard to make the thumb look good with an offset wrist that much. And I learned I learned it, or I the first time I really paid attention to it was on the character designs for Iron Giant. Like Hogarth has a really awesome offset wrist. I would like to try and do that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I and I I also um. I when I make mouth cavities, I'm always trying different things too. It's like I don't I don't usually stick to the same method over and over and over again. Like and I, I particularly like to use this platform, the the live Pixelogic Live platform for trying new things. Like I don't know why I like to try them live, but I do. Like Sculptress Pro, like I don't I don't really teach how to do this stuff in the course yet, but I I'm going to. And I like trying uh, varying degrees of like shapes to use for block out. Like you'll notice I didn't use um, breast shapes this time because I'm just gonna pull them out of the torso. Just an experiment. Time you got okay about 45 minutes oh thanks I need to I need to bring those back I need to make the block out gallery uh, bring it back and make it stronger because there are a lot of block outs that aren't in there yet and I agree with you <laughs> You like the Z modeler? Oh, how to push push in the cav the mouth cavity? Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Uh, Zofo, yeah, you you'd think so. Um, I think Pixlogic approached me just because I do use this primitive blockout method, and um, the primitive blockouts with the mannequins are very very similar in nature. Um, the the difference, the main difference is. Um, with the with the Z sphere block out, you're kind of uh, it's it's good. You're restricted and not restricted in a couple ways. So 
with Z spheres, they're all connected together. So you can't move them around separately. So it's a little constricting that way, but at the same time, you can actually go into there and pose them out and change the scale and things like that. So it's less restricting that way. Um, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. <laughs> Team primitives. Yeah. Okay, I think this will really start to uh, make sense when I start to get clothes on her. Need to fix fix this rear. Uh, do I m not not typically? I mean, I will on some of my characters, but uh, um, I I would like to rig more, but I haven't. So usually the the characters I make for this Pixelogic live stream are just just for fun and practice. So sometimes the farthest I really take them is to uh, three D print. Like I'll pose them up inside of ZBrush, and then I'll three D print them. Yeah, I was actually trying to get people. It's just. Rigging is a very tedious and technical process, whereas this is artistic, so people actually like to watch. But when you are, um, when you're rigging, because I've I've done a lot of rig, not a lot, I've done my a handful of rigging in the past, and it's just like, I don't know, it. It's a lot of trial and error, back and forth. It's a lot of like painting skin weights and testing things and all that kind of stuff and uh i just don't know that it would be very exciting to watch okay so let's make a i'm actually going to separate the head from the body at the t-shirt at the collar right here because i want to z remesh this after i get some loops and stuff going i think I'm still going to I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with it there. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's actually kind of therapeutic in a way. Um painting painting skin weights and testing them out. <laughs> Neil, that's true. Paint spots on a dinosaur. Okay, let's see. I'm going to just kind of look at this. Um, actually, let's let's uh, increase the density. You are my density through here, because the more density you have, the more resolution your mask is going to have. So now, let's turn Sculptors Pro off. Pull that nose out, something like this. Yeah, blend shapes. You know, the thing with blend shapes is you can't really use them in games. They're more for film and TV. So I really like making uh, blend shapes as well, but I wish, I'm, I'm sure someday you'll be able to use them in games more, but they're just too expensive on the game engine. It just takes too much processing power to use them like in the middle of a game. Maybe for cinematic characters, it's a different story, but for game characters, yeah, usually not. Hey, what's up, Liam? Uh, yes, it does, Zofo. It does.
Yep. Yep. Blend shapes are fun that way. Okay. A little higher. Hey, what's up, Mark? Yeah, how's it going? Pull this forehead forward, kind of emphasize that square face. Let's get some eyes in there. Split them off. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I really like the character designs in Cloudy. Okay. round eyes uh crypto um my thoughts are uh it's it's getting there but still not like zbrush <laughs> i guess but what's uh, like blender and zbrush can go hand in hand as far as like uh some of the some of the later things like um retopology retopology rendering Map baking, that kind of stuff. Things that ZBrush isn't good at. Okay, now let's get that, let's get that mouth going. We'll try and decide. Um, I think I am gonna split this head off. So let's duplicate. Hide this. Save it. Um, and then use select lasso. Uh, no, not quite. So I'm going to delete hidden and then do fill close holes, which closes it like this. Now that we have that, we can do the opposite with the head. Let's do a double. Hey, Chicken Hawk. Happy New Year. Let's do close holes. Whoops. Did I delete hidden on that? I don't think I did. <laughs> delete hidden on that first, and then do close holes. Okay. There we 
we go. Oh, and hello from Barcelona. How's it going? There we go. Okay. Um, are eyes always so big for stylized characters? And is it harder when they are close together like the Simpsons? Um, are they always big? No. It depends on the design, the character design. So there are stylized characters that have eyes that are almost realistic size. And there's stylized characters like Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. that has one gigantic eye. It, it just depends on the design. And um, are they... I, I do find them more difficult when the eyes are closer together uh, because it's kind of breaking that uh, measurement system of, um, and I'm not paying too, uh, too much attention to it right here, but it's usually the measurement system is one eye width between. So if, if she had three eyes right here, the center eye is the, is the measurement for how far apart they are. And you can see now that my eyes here are too close because there's not enough room for another eye in the middle there. So. Mortis, you have so many questions you don't know where to start. Um, that's that's kind of why I made my, not to, not to pitch my course, but that's why I made the 3D character workshop. I take you all the way from, from zero to finished uh, game character. So if you're interested in that, Um, so crypto, can ZBrush sculptors earn 5,000 US dollars? Are you talking about like per character or what are you talking about? So, um, flip normals has a really, really good video on, uh, ZBrush versus blender that you should watch if you're interested in knowing the difference. But since this is the pixel logic, uh, channel. I'm not really going to go get into the differences here. I've shared my opinion on it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to sit and talk about it too much. I'm going to add some more space between those eyes. Um, oh, monthly? Oh, sure, it's possible. Oh, it, it also depends on where, you're, where you live, like what country you're from, um, that kind of stuff, what opportunities you have available to you. Oh, you did? Oh, you did. You already said it. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Mike. There you go. Boom. <laughs> And I agree with flip normals, what they have to say for now. It's kind of like a, a specialty software versus a, a jack of all trades kind of a thing. It's like, you're never really gonna beat beat the the one that's focusing on the good the one thing it's really good at the big size of sphere helps with the curved shape of the eye in the face as well yep it helps i probably have our eyes too big too but okay Let's do, I'm just gonna mask out a mouth. Look at that, <laughs> done, ship it. <laughs> you remember saying ship it, Mike? <laughs> oh man. For a beginner, which artist do you recommend to follow or try to copy like homework to start practicing? 
uh, like a 2D artist. Um, it's, well, I, I would probably recommend um, Mitch Leaway. Right, Neil? So Neil's, Neil's uh, kind of just starting out, and uh, he's been loving um, trying to model Mitch's work. All right. The mouse always looked horrible when you first start. You look like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like peeps. <laughs> What are those things called for Easter? Those little chickens with the silly mouths on them. Mitch uh, Leeway. So maybe Neil can uh, pop and pop a link in there. There you go. Thanks, Nit. Thanks, Neil. I was going to say thanks, Mitch. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm not going to make too deep of a mouth cavity for her. I'll take it just a little further than it is, but we like that. Where do I work currently? I actually do my, I, I work on my course full time. So um, I have over a thousand students now and they take up all my time. So that's my full-time job now. Plus I do occasional freelance, but not very often. And I love it. I'm just going to say I love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. My course, yeah, so it's right above my head, the 3D Character Workshop. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I have a lot of my students in here right now. It's just one course. One course to rule them all. Uh, smooth Directional Tenshi, it's in the... Uh, if you go to Lightbox right here, if you go to Brushes, and you just go to the Smooth Brush folder right here, it's just right in here. Smooth Directional right there. That's where you can find it. How are you guys? Aw. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to keep you guys around. <laughs> Where do I send the checks? <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. And that's, that's, uh, I've been, people have been asking me what my uh, 2020 goals are. And I'm actually re recording the entire course and making three. 3D Character Workshop 2.0 because the course has been out for almost three years, two and a half years. So it's time for an upgrade, update. <laughs> Any advice on how to earn money through ZBrush? Um, well, that's kind of a that's kind of a broad question because you can earn money with ZBrush so many different ways, and again, it's it depends on the opportunities where you live, how good how how high your your scoping skills are. You can get jobs doing uh, collectibles, games, television, um, all sorts of stuff. So it just completely depends on your your skill level and opportunity. Um, but the best way I've found is to get your work out there by putting it on somewhere like ArtStation and getting your stuff seen and then get it, trying to get the right people to see it. Um, a, another good way to get people to see your art is by doing challenges like um, 
like the art station challenge, polygon challenge, those kind of things, like legit challenges. That's just another, and it gives you a reason to sculpt too, which is pretty good. Well, thank you. I'm just, this is just a start right now, so <laughs> I'm getting there, but thank you. Yeah, Hasbro, Hasbro hire sculptors. Um, you can get jobs sculpting like miniature figures, like for D&D &D and stuff. There's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, possible ways to go. So I wish I had like a definitive answer, like this is where you go to get work, but it's not that easy. I wish it was. Um, took about nine months off ZBrush. You know nothing now? We'll get back in there. <laughs> Pick it back up. You got it. Um, let's see. How important is anatomy for this job? It's quite important, but not not how you think. Um, it would. It's important to know the important anatomical landmarks so you get them right. But it's not important to know like every single thing there is to know about anatomy because you're an artist not a doctor so you're trying to find the the things that are going to help you make your characters look better for example so um if that makes any sense <laughs> i don't know if people agree with me but um yeah you can go check out uh there's different areas to or different places you can learn anatomy I'm trying to figure out how her lips are actually. Let me zoom in and see how these are functioning. So I can't tell if this is her bottom lip or her top lip or what exactly is happening or if it's a combination of both. I'm trying to decide. I might make it a combo of both <laughs> right <laughs> um i you know for for anatomy i recommend proco.com is fantastic uh anatomy for sculptors is another one um yeah andrew loomis is great um let's see there's so much out there Okay, I'm gonna actually increase the detail on these lips, maybe even more. Come on, give me more detail. Do oh, I trade VR sculpting? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's uh, honestly, Mike, that's how I was kind of thinking of it. So I'm glad you kind of back me up on that uh, thought. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I feel like too, because if if I put my finger over her bottom lip and just kind of look at her upper upper lip, that's, I feel like that's what's happening there. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, that's that's spotlight. Zygote body. I've not heard of that one. How's it going, Ghost Christmas feature? Haven't seen you for a while. Just 
Um, when you sculpt a cartoon character, is it your own creation or is it your team? Usually in a professional environment, like if I'm getting paid to sculpt something, it is not my design. If I'm doing something on my own, maybe, just for fun, that's when, that's when it is possibly my design, but I'm not really, uh, I'm not really a character designer. I just like to bring things to life in 3D, so I like modeling other people's designs. Yeah, that's, yeah, what Neil's saying is if you're going to use Spotlight for reference, make sure you turn off Spotlight Projection. And you can find this in uh, Brush Samples Spotlight Projection. So if you go up to your Brush menu, go to Samples, it's right here. And if you don't turn that off, none of your brushes are going to work when you have something like this showing. Make sure you turn that off. Yeah, this concept is from TB Choi. I should uh, be saying that more often, but yeah, TB Choi. We'll go ahead and start giving her a little smile. Even though it's an asymmetrical smile, I'll put the asymmetry in later, but now we can work the smile in a little bit yeah Neil's Neil's king of links thank you Neil <laughs> all right this is a really crazy head What's up, crazy head? Yeah, like square. Somebody said square head. What's up, square head? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Square head. TB Choi is on a different level than the rest of us. I'll have to say that. I agree with you. And she is super duper nice. So. Um, she was at the Lightbox Expo last year, and uh, she had a booth there, and it was kind of sad because she was all she was she wasn't very uh, busy at her booth. So I had an opportunity to go say hi and talk to her for a while, and she was just over the moon excited that I was a big fan of her artwork and her her anatomy skills. If you want to learn anatomy, she's a good one to learn it from. She breaks it down very, very well. Yeah, it kind of is, but it's her signature. So you can, this is her signature right here. It's like TB, but yeah, uh, sometimes I've been putting it in text below. I should, I didn't have time today, but I should have. <laughs> All right. About 10 more minutes. Not a bad start, I guess. Those hands, oh, they're killing me. Killing me, Smalls. Don't wanna fix them. They look like bubbles. Oh, come on. It's like interruption. You don't look bad from the back, but from the front, it's like the volumes are broken. Feels like this, the volume right there is what's doing it, but I don't know. All right. Am 
Not more, better work it with a lot of polygons. It's simple, mark and remesh. I don't understand what you're saying, Limbo. <laughs> Sorry. Z remesh. Are you saying it's if is it not better? It's if you're if you're asking if this is a better way to work versus using Z remesher, um, there's not like the perfect workflow. It's just what you what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. So like there's about I don't know, there's at least 10 to 15 ways to do everything inside of ZBrush. And uh, for this, I just, I wanted to use Sculptress Pro today um, because I want to kind of get better at it and experiment with it and that kind of stuff. So um, sometimes I prefer the Z Remesher workflow and sometimes I don't. But I will eventually Z Remesh this. For sure. And this hair is going to be a challenge because it's like sitting on her square, square head and there's not any depth information from it. So I may do the mask extract method, which I usually don't do when I'm doing hair. But in this instance, I might because it sits so close on top of her head and it matches just mirrors that shape so closely I think I'm going to kind of looks like uh, Dalzin from Street Fighter for a second there okay so You get square. Does Z remesh work better when you come from Sculptress Pro instead of Dynamesh? No, not necessarily. It works very similarly. Mosin, there is actually, um, there is, there are video documentations um, in Z Classroom, it's called, on the Pixelogic website. And on YouTube, you can find uh, videos. I don't know if there's a PDF, but there is a Frequently Asked Questions document. Um, I don't know if it's downloadable, but you can find all the docs online, all the documentation. Um, it's TV Choi made the concept. Okay, so I'll start with this. Let's see what I can get from it. Use extract right here. This is just a preview. Okay, we'll try that. Link Master Flash. So I'm going to hit accept and we'll play with this. Oh, it did it did combine this through here <laughs> I didn't I didn't want it to do that so I'm gonna redo that delete it and get this mask further away from itself here back here square a lot of polygons define it face Z remeshed
sinners. Sorry, Limbo, it's kind of hard to understand what you're trying to say. You learned a lot from the three-part knife tutorial on Boolean mesh. Ah, that's a good one. Okay, so now it's it's split more. Got that. There we go, and it gave me polygroups, which is great. Now I can hide that surface. And that's what I want to keep. Sorry, I'm Spanish. That's okay. That's okay. I'm, I don't under. Sorry, I don't understand it more. I think I do a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to Z remesh this. Really low. There we go. Okay. That way I can just start to pull it down in the back. Make the curve forward. I think I want to adjust her profile to be a little more appealing. Okay, and then make her head even more square via her hair. <laughs> Her head doesn't have to be as square as her hair on top. Yep, David, that's it. That's that's it in a nutshell right there. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, it just makes sense, right? He breaks it down that way. Um, and it's, it's interesting because both of us kind of learned it from uh, Preston Blair, an old... Disney animator and he was also um, like he animated on Tom and Jerry and stuff like that Probably we've seen some of his stuff work a simple case with many polygons made it more difficult oh yeah 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 so I think you're saying um, um, like working traditionally with box modeling is that what you're trying to say like traditional With a lot of polygons and with ZBrush I typically don't pay too much attention to the topology until the very very end when I need when I when the topology matters is when you need to take it out of ZBrush and bring it in somewhere else oh yeah yep she did the Hulk yeah I think somebody modeled him recently, right? Some one of the students. Okay. Okay. Hey, from Mixer. Wow, that's the first. Stoke, you're the first person that I've seen say anything from Mixer. So I'm actually. Right now, I'm I'm quad streaming. I'm streaming to Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and Mixer. So, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's somebody's actually watching from Mixer. Hello. <laughs> Mixer's a lot like Twitch, I guess. Turn that back on. And I think I might, I think her face is just too far forward, just in general. So I might just pull this whole thing back in space. So let's hide the body for a minute. Yeah, Pixlogic has just barely started to stream on Mixer for, I think, the last, this is the third time I've streamed on Mixer as well. So 
Okay, so I'm going to mask this off. Okay, and then mask this off. Should probably Z remesh this face. Well, okay, and then show those eyeballs. And then pull everything back at once. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Except for I'm going to really have to fix that face because it's crunching too much into the mask. <laughs> A three person stream might work very well on Mixer's platform. I have, so yeah, I don't, we'd have to try that out. It'd be cool. power this up and fix this area that I broke. Oh yeah, right. I, I need to figure out where they found that, that, that bot. If Restream just does it, or if you have to install it, if it's a plugin somehow, or exactly what. How do I, no Pixelogic is the one streaming, so their they they are uh, their restream is taking care of it. I I just stream, I just stream to their restream, and then whatever they're doing on top of that is what they do. I don't really have control of it. Oh yeah, mini polygons. Yep, yep. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um right now so you can use as many or as few as you want in zbrush it's a sculpting program it's not a modeling program that's the beauty of it yeah i like that better Okay, and it kind of helped with that keeping her squarish face, which I like. Okay, and I just want to pull this out and then I'll be done. Just want to pull this chin forward just a bit. So I'm looking at this profile here thanks Frank yeah it was just getting too like too square right too thick <laughs> from front to back too fat I don't know what you want to call it too far thanks David thank you guys for hanging out it's it's gonna be a this is gonna be a multi-stream multi-stream like like different parts. So this will be the first part. I still got to do eyelashes and eyebrows and color. I like her freckles. Um, we'll make her shirt and her shorts. It'll be fun to make her shoes. And then I'll pose her in this position. And uh, I just got a 3D printer for Christmas. Um, so maybe we'll 3D print her. We'll see. If I can get her appealing enough. This is a very... The reason I chose this... Well, because my friend Marty recommended it. But... Um, the reason I chose this is because it was so challenging and I really want to see if I can gather the appeal that this concept has in the 3D sculpt itself. So we'll see. Hope I didn't miss your answer. Do you approach sculpting process differently when you sculpt for a film mobile game or do you think of the implications? Um, only in Retop, yeah. That, that's the beauty of ZBrush. It lets you uh, get all of that technical stuff out of the way so you can just work on and focus on the art. And then towards the end, you can decide based on your goals, if you're going to 3D print it, if you're just going to render it, or um, you know what you're going to do with it. It depends on, like if you're going to go to television, film, whatever, you'll retopologize it and 
do you know, all those different things. So it depends, it depends. But usually when you're doing the high resolution version of your character, it really doesn't matter. You can just forget about all of that stuff. The only thing I do focus on, I'll have to take it back a little bit. The, the one thing I do focus on is if I'm gonna make it into a toy um, that's going to be manufactured, that's when I start caring about um, if it's gonna pull out of a mold. So that's, um, no, I, I haven't bought a, a form, uh, form three yet. I found, uh, oh, what is it called? I can't, I forgot the name of it, but it was on a Black Friday sale. It's a resin printer. Um, it was on a Black Friday sale and uh, it's, it's, it was like 200 bucks or something like that, but <laughs> it's really small. It's a small printer, um, but I, I still plan on getting a Form 3 printer this year. Hopefully, hopefully that's, that's, that's the goal, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I still don't like this profile. I got to fix it, but <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it can get get this to work, maybe a bigger forehead. I don't know. I, I still want to play with that, that side thing. El, Elegoo Mars, maybe? Uh, fo, photon, I think. I think it's the Photon polyscope. Thanks. Yeah, Photon. It's the, um, yeah, any cubic Photon. It's the, the, the lesser of the two. The, I, I screwed up and I didn't get the dual axis one, but um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> any cubic, yep. All right, you guys, thanks again for watching and have a wonderful week. Again, I give away my user interface, all these brushes for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I have a online workshop over there. So if you're interested in learning how to make stylized characters like this for toys, for games, for film, for television, any of those things, um, I teach how to, to take a character from nothing. If you're a complete beginner, all the way through to making a game character and uh, you can learn all that and more over at again 3dcharacterworkshop.com so um, thanks so much guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you uh, next Monday thank you so much Pixelogic for hosting me and uh, we'll see you next week take care <laughs>